number three, the reading. We're going to light a candle and we're going to get some sage going. And we're going to have a quick recap of what's happening here, what we're, what we're expanding from here. Here. Ooh, I can feel the energy of the sun. All right. We're in a time of change. And it's time for us to just accept change. Change is happening no matter what all the time. But we're in a time of great change. The masculine is learning how to transform through understanding where to apply energy and how to act. And it's through peace. We're connecting to gorilla spirit. We're understanding what peace means. And this is connecting back to a piece of our heritage, of who we are here. And, you know, our connection to the primates. So we're going to make this shape with the masculine. We're going to make this tetrahedron with the masculine. And we're going to have an enlightening moment to heal from our five of wands charge of this is not take this is not using action properly. Okay, this is violent, this is fighting, this is lower vibrational, this is hostile. This is not working together. We're going to heal from it. We're going to work with the feminine. And we're going to be gifted this, but because we've created it. And it's going to allow us to do this. To grow this rose in the seven of pentacles. And how we're going to do this. We're about to shift through the earth. We're going to understand where our personal power comes from. This is connected to our solar plexus right now. We're going to work with the elements and we're going to understand something. We're going to ask the cards today what that is. And we're working with Pisces and Leo. Isis and Ishtar. We have a white goddess and a red goddess. Powerful female deities here to help us understand and expand while we transform we're going to understand that through a situation by using science we're going to use science here and kindness as well as our gifts our connection to pisces and the cup working with the cup Working with the cups. We must be getting close to some truth. We're going to be able to focus. Because we have connected with our Merkaba to the heavens. And it has something to do with our connection here. From going... To, from separated to connected and it's happening like this and we're going to ask the cards what this means right now we're going here and then we're going to confirm it with the moon okay guys We know we're healing with the masculine by repairing connection with the feminine. So the feminine is going to seek something and see something with those 13 spheres of knowledge. And the masculine is going to expand with it. And then we're going somewhere. 
We're understanding something. We're elevating. We're connected. We're, vibe, we're vibing to harmonize. Ooh, I wanted to see if that was the card, but it's not the card. Ooh. That's the card. I'm sorry, card. I'm sorry, card. Self-protection, setting boundaries. And it's connected to the place of knowledge and unconditional love. We're going to see something here. It's like, I want you to even like literally see, we're going to change direction in order to expand. We're going to see something here. This means something right now. Self-protection, setting boundaries. The location and very imposing ancient tree. Oh, that's completely wrong. Here we have a centrally located and very imposing ancient tree of life. Its branches are strong and flexible, radi radiating out from a central trunk. Held in its gentle but sturdy branches is an armadillo that is in the process of closing its beautifully textured shell for protection. A pink rosebud grows up from the center of the piece located between the viewer and the tree. Just above the rosebud is an orange-brown iris. It's a portal surrounded by a golden ring. Three ladybugs are surrounded by a circular golden light and walk in the direction of the iris. The central ladybug's wings are spread open and it's just about to fly in. The blue black, the blue background undulates in vein-like branches behind the stately tree. We know that there was a channeled message that the ladybug in the nine of cups card meant something this is what it means it's connected to that and it, this is connected to wish fulfillment your message the armadillo is an interesting critter it seems quite aggressive and ready to fight with its very tough armor like exterior but it's actually a very gentle this is connected to the armadillo and understanding armadillo magic and setting boundaries Understanding our need for personal space and relaxation to keep our vibes up high. To be able to create. Understanding this. And you guys, if you feel called, please study the armadillo. Study armadillo spirit. Connect to that spirit. Ask it to help you heal. Affirmation. I surround myself with a protective white light shield for psychic protection. And I set boundaries at work, home, and with my friends. And many of you guys have heard working with this concept, I'm sure. And this is all about taking old, old concepts and projects and allowing them to blossom with a new vision. But keep these projects hidden until you're sure that you're ready to share them with the world. The three ladybugs will see that you're rewarded for your accomplishments. And this is thinking about working with the young and the old. We've healed with the energy of the opposites here. And this is having to do with teachings of life, love, and gratitude. And it's connected to this place of knowledge and unconditional love. Unlock and release the fear. This opens up onto a beautiful vista in New Zealand. Ooh, this card is in New Zealand. A beautiful log, a beautiful young woman named Wanaka holds two hearts as she bends, looking at the seal on her lap. Her dress is made of yellow green molecules. Our connection to of course, our solar plexus and our heart chakra. Four dragonflies hover over her, over her while two sprites play music and whisper loving 
thoughts in her ears. The moon is being unlocked with one of the two keys being held by the hand-like branches of the heart. Three bees rest in her arteries. Where the heck are these bees? Oh, right there. Bifurcating arteries. Mom, how do you say this? B I F U R C A T I N G? I guess. What guess. word is that, guys? I have no well, I'm going to learn a new word today that, were, that are growing from the heart. These branches form letters. Waves from a nearby ocean gently roll up onto the sand of New Zealand. The beach separates the day from the starry night sky. Your message. This is all about creating and allowing positive, loving relationships in your life. The first relationship has to start with you. You are a lovingly divine and deserving of everything good in this world, including love. Honor yourself is fundamentally an act of revolution. It means that you're not comparing yourself to any illusions and not allowing anyone else to have power over you. And this is how we're going to heal with our solar plexus and our heart chakra. And this is so, so true. We're mastering self-love right now. We're mastering the art of self-love. It's part of the two of cups equation. And it's connection to that one cup. From that two cups going to one cup. And understanding that. Evolving to that space. Don't pay too much attention to the inner critical voice that can be demanding and misleading. When your higher self speaks to you, it's always constructive and understanding. The negative voice you hear is not coming from that. It's always coming from other energies that would love to weaken your beautiful light and power. The seal shows up around highly imaginative and creative people like you because seals don't have external ears, just small openings. They represent paying attention to your positive inner voice, your intuition. And there it is. And your intuition is positive. Positively speaks to you. It positively tells you what's up. Your ego is talking negatively. Your higher self. What I so love so much about higher self. It's like you know what. Like sometimes we get mad at higher self. Because we don't want to listen to higher self. And we want to keep acting some sort of way. Because we're feeling some sort of way. Right. But you know. Higher self is like you know. Let's just not do that this time. We don't. like. Let's not do that. This is not for our greatest good. Don't drink from that cup. Just don't do it. Like I'm here. I'm here. You know. Just remember what happened last time. Like we had to do this, this, and this to heal with after. And you're like, eh, eh. And you're caught lower vibrational. And you just want to feed that impulse. You just want to drink from that cup. And then you drink that cup. You spill all the milk. You're like, why didn't I listen to higher self? Right? Why didn't I just listen to higher self? But you don't, you know, that feeds a whole other circle. And it's just like, you know, sometimes we get mad at higher self. But who's helping us clean up that milk? Who's the first person there to help us clean up that milk? Higher self? You gotta remember that. I know that that allowed me to do a lot of healing. That allowed me to see a lot of stuff. Higher self was always there cleaning up the milk with me. Whatever you want to call it that you spilled. I, it was pure poison. I don't like milk. Spilling the poison. And higher self was always helping me clean it up. You gotta be kinder to self. And understanding what this lesson means, it's like, you know what? You know that this is not in alignment with you and you're hurting yourself. This is part of unconditional love too. It's thinking we're the only ones that can fix everything. And we could only love that one person or we're the only ones that can do this. There's a whole universe that's there for everybody. And we're not the only ones. That is a God complex. We're working with the universe. We're on a team, man. And we're we're understanding if, if we love someone but they're not in alignment with us and it's not for our highest good. We let them go with light and love. We wish them on their way and knowing that they're going to find what's alignment with them. It's like, like not like, oh, we're going to, oh, without me, they're going to be walking to the ends of the earth sad. I have to be with them. Even though I'm not in alignment with them, I have to be with them because I love them. I feel some sort of way about them, but it's not in line with me. This is hurting my being. It doesn't feel right. I know this is not for me. But I'm going to stay doing it anyways. That's where we untwist it and we're, 
we're in what's alignment with us and we're finding the beauty in that and we're working with the universe and someone comes into our life people come into our lives we learn from them we alchemy with them and then many times we say goodbye and they come in and they go out and they come in and they go out and you know we have people that stay with us that are tied to us we just honor it all because at the end of the day we always are working with the divine we're always working with the elements we have our team we have each other you know life it's not just saying it's forgetting about us. We forget about us. And we're just having a reminder of this today. We're having a reminder. We have to see how this fits into making this freaking cheap. Guys, I need to get back on trap because I want to know. My crea my creativity is deep and endless. I'm brilliant. So how are we making the shape? I feel like I really needed to have the sacred geometry oracle here to help with this. And I thought I needed it. And I don't. But... I feel like we need a deeper answer as to how we're making this shape. The bees are here. We're on the track, the right track. We're going to get a message from the moon because I want to see what the moon has to say. And then I'm going to go get that, grab that deck. And we're going to say, okay, we're going to have an achievement through the earth. Thank goodness. Love is here. Ooh, baby. This is how we're gonna continue to make the shapes we need to. Those two tetrahedrons coming together to form unconditional love. Earth and air are working together. So we're gonna have an achievement through the earth and we're gonna understand our responsibility. And right now it's looking like we're healing with the inner child and doing some work with self. I love the fact that we're seeing Venus here. As we know, Venus just entered Aquarius. This is working with Cancer, ruled by the moon and Pluto. A beautiful woman with long blonde hair stares out of the card, clasping a fair-haired child to her bosom. She is wearing a helmet and a green cloak and holds a dagger in her left hand. Guys, look, she's wearing a green cloak. There's a connection here. So she holds this dagger in her left hand, her red dress representing life and vitality, and behind her head is the circle of a dark red blood-colored moon. Now, this is connected to being in a favorable time for families and loving children. There's a connection there with all this birthing and birthing of the children. Pluto signifies transformation and the immense power while the kind and sympathetic nature of the moon is nurturing and protective. When these two planets combine in the water sign of Cancer, they denote the enormous protective power of a mother animal guarding her young the great power of pluto gives strength to the gentle emotional moon who is able to express her nature easily in cancer and it's her own sign that also means something this is a mother child relationship this is connection this is repair this means we're we've repaired with the mother in a whole new way and remember what we're birthing is connected to new earth light information that's connected to new earth creation and we have to heal with the mother at this level in order to do so now if necessary take up arms and defense and that's our connection to protection of someone less able to care for themselves and this means that we deeply care about people and ideals that are close to our heart. This is a heroic mansion and it's instinctive protection. Instinctive. So what we are creating here, guys, it's instinctive. We know the Empress is here. She is the whole reason that we're birthing. And then this deck... We really see it. And it is the light. And that's this future reading I'm working on. I don't think it's right if we don't talk about Venus here. Guys, this was supposed to be a quick reading. 
like this was supposed to be a quick reading and who knew but i should know better and to know that yeah, i'm here with them we're working with a white goddess Taurus, the earth, and also connected to Libra rate. This goddess is seated on her throne, supported by a magnificent swan. Traditionally, Venus traveled the sky in her chariot, drawn by six swans. She's hanging with Father Sky. Her hair flows forward, bubbling like the frothy foam of the ocean from which she is said to have been born. Her dress is the color of coral caves deep in the ocean where the nymphs completed her education. She knows all about the water, baby. In her left hand, she raises the mirror of Venus, the, the universal emblem that has come to represent the feminine in a botanical and zoological sense. The symbol is also the astrological glyph for the planet Venus, the morning and evening star. She holds before her the right hand and a staff surmounted by the fruitful lotus flower. The opening flower is red, the color attributed to her lover Mars. Now. There's so much said in all of this. First of all, it's connected to the Queen of Pentacles and what we're birthing, what's being activated, the light, the connection to New Earth. And where is she? Hmm, maybe she's here. Oh, she's right in front of my face. This is this. Exactly. You know, old sense, new sense. Love that's, you know, love is love evolving th through time. And her lover Mars and all the work that Venus and Mars have been doing this year alone. Now beneath the image are the symbol for the earth sign Taurus and the moon disc of the white goddess. And this goddess represents love in all of its forms, from pure or ideal love to lustful desire. She denotes a love of pleasure and the good things of life, and a blatant use of personal charm or seduction in order to obtain them. She warns that you will have to pay the appropriate price for self-indulgence, but if you are prepared for that, then so be it. And there it is. If you're, you know what, if you're going to play with lust, you're going to what's on your your karmic scales you're gonna have to balance that like guys we're understanding the power of creation that's why she's holding a staff that's why we're understanding we're we're not gonna battle and we're gonna even understand the integrity of the light when we're creating with love remember we came here to heal what's toxic from love what doesn't feel like love in love why are we questioning it? Well, I'm questioning this because this doesn't feel like love. We came here to heal that. We also have to be responsible for what we're creating. And this is how we do that here. Generally, Venus is a, benef a beneficent goddess who suggests a good or fruitful outcome. A white goddess brings a strong, youthful, and creative approach to the situation. The nature of Earth and Taurus is, above all else, sensual and comforting, a loving tendency to act slowly and surely in familiar ways. And this is connected to the month of May. So now we have a connection to the, the months of March, May, and August. Okay? And that's our connection to Venus, Ishtar, and Isis. Two white goddesses, one red. 